Hey everybody, I'm Joe. And I'm Kimball. Today we're talking about a concept called keyhole zoning. It's a framework for building walkable communities, for building small, affordable, tiny home, neighborhoods, yurts, cabins, creative shelter that's affordable. Because that's what people need today. People often don't travel too much farther than a few miles from their downtown area. If you're sticking close to home, why are we all paying for these cars that can go for hundreds of miles in one shot? Right. And are so large and over-engineered. Right. So today's conversation is about a framework for building the type of communities we envision at Acorn Land Labs and how attainable this could be. Right. Talking about taking our cars to get in the most basic of things. That reminds me, a few months ago when you and I went, we were like, we were like, man, a burrito sounds really good right now. And I remember you were kind of chuckling, thinking about how we had to take a two-ton truck, burn a lot of gasoline just to go pick up like a burrito and bring it back. And like, when I actually thought about it, I was like, that is kind of hilarious. Like, you know, I, I grew up with cars. I think of cars as just, you know, a way to get around. You know, actually thinking about it, it's almost hilarious. And tragic. <laughs> and tragic. Because when you think about the bills. I mean, the average car payment now is like six, seven hundred bucks. Right. Insurance is another 100, 150. Right. Add a few more hundred for fuel, maintenance. Right. It's hilarious on one end and then depressing on the other. Right. And I, I want to be clear for people listening or watching, we're not against like cars as a whole. Like so much of infrastructure and traveling depends on cars. It's more so that they're just overused when there could be better planning for towns and whatnot. And that, that better planning comes through more walkable paths, you know, more paths for maybe like smaller EV vehicles, like a cart or a bike. Uh, we're not saying swap all all cars out for these, you know, little electric scooters. We're just saying there's a better balance to be had. Exactly. Because today there's no balance. Right. We've got a Publix a quarter mile from here. And if we had a green belt where we could bike, scooter, drive a golf cart, we'd drive up to Publix for groceries in a golf cart all the time. Right. But we never do that because there's only a busy highway. You would be taking your life into your hands right. on a bike or a golf cart. Frankly, you still take your life into your hands with a vehicle. Right. It's turning horrifying. Out on such a busy highway. If we had a sidewalk out front, I would totally take it to get to our Publix and whatnot. But we don't because it wasn't made for walking. It was made for cars. And, you know, we have friends. They used to have a golf cart and they would drive around the downtown area and they loved it. But, you know, eventually they were like, you know, cars, first of all, already scary enough, but so many of them aren't going the speed limit, they're going way too fast, and eventually just, you know, from concerns of safety, they had to stop driving it around, which is a bummer to them. But it's been proven time and time again by, you know, either families doing it or, or you know, individuals doing it, that people do enjoy getting around in these safer modes of transport. So anyway, it's just like, it's clearly a better design, and clearly there are people that want it, but there's just not much of an effort being made on a bigger scale. But you did tell me not too long ago about a project Project, rails to trails that is kind of making a solution for this sort of uh, more walkable uh, idea. Do you kind of hit on that and then we can go back into the keyhole concept? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just so folks can understand what keyhole represents, if you look at a keyhole on Google Images, a keyhole, like a traditional skeleton keyhole, is a circle with a triangle underneath. Right. So the circle in the keyhole zoning concept represents the downtown city. I mean, most counties in the U.S. have a small city at its core or middle. That's mm -hmm. the county seat. Yeah. You've got your downtown, and those were all established mostly in the 1800s, if not early 1900s. They were built to be walkable. Mm -hmm. Our historic downtown is walkable. Yeah. It's a great place to go hang out. It's been seeing a revitalization. That's the circle in the keyhole shape because we're literally naming this concept after the shape of a keyhole. So you've got the downtown circle that's walkable. Then you've got a long triangle stemming out from that circle, a corridor, if you will. Counties are not going to adopt tiny homes and walkable pathways wholesale yet. The whole county is not going to just say, yeah, let's try it everywhere. All right. I know we've touched on the term keyhole community and we've defined what it looks like shape-wise with, you know, your downtown and then a cross section of your county. We need to discuss or paint a vision of what it looks like to live in a keyhole community and why we're pushing this idea. Imagine if, you know, you and your wife are just starting out, you know, no kids yet. Y'all are married and you want your first starter home. When my wife and I bought our first starter home in this county, we had Zillow alerts set up so that we would see instant notifications and a little home in the walkable downtown popped up for sale. It was one of the only homes we felt like we could afford. And this was before the housing crisis. We put an offer on the home sight unseen and there were five offers on this little bitty home 
you legally couldn't build that home today because of the square footage minimums. That wow. home is 1,200 square feet. Legally, you need a home 1,500 square feet or bigger. Wow. But that's what we wanted as a young couple. Yeah. It was a great starter home. Living in a keyhole community, you know, you're, you're newly married, you could be single, you're looking to buy your first home and you find a little bitty 800 to 1,000 square foot home that's just what you need and you get to buy it for $100,000. You get to finance that home and you're building equity. Owning a car is very expensive and let's say that you work remote like you do. You don't want to have $1,000 going out every month for your car payment, your insurance, all those expenses. You know, your spouse might have a car, but you don't need it. And in this keyhole community, your little home is in a neighborhood that's just off of a green space pathway. You buy a nice e-bike or an enclosed golf cart to get to the grocery store, to go to the park, to go to the post office, because you can access all those elements from that green way that goes all the way from the center of the county to the edge of the county. You travel a little bit slower, but you enjoy the pace of life. I actually read a study that said the average speed of cars when you factor in all the stopping and all the time we work paying for our cars is nine miles an hour. That's the average speed of a car in its use. In its use. So a bike can go faster than that. So why aren't we using low speed vehicles that can go 10, 11, 12 miles an hour locally? Cars are fine for going hundreds of miles between cities, but in our downtowns and our counties, even from rural to suburban areas in our counties, we need walkable pathways that are you know, usable for e-bikes and golf carts. But imagine if you were paying, what would the payment be in an e-bike that cost a thousand bucks? $50 a month? Yeah. 50 bucks a month for your e-bike, you charge it off solar, or just the grid if you're in your little 800 square foot home. Your payment on your 800 square foot home is four or 500 bucks a month, a quarter of what average rent is. Yeah. You're building equity. You can bike to the grocery store. Your spouse has a car and that car is parked at the edge of the Keys, Keys um, whole community. Yeah. You bike or walk there. You take your car where you need to when you need it. I mean, just imagine if you're all in expenses for car and home are less than a thousand bucks. That'd be amazing. Wouldn't that change so many lives? And what's standing in our way? Nothing technologically, it's all rules. Yeah. It's all rules, it's all politics, it's all what our communities are not willing to do. And this is where young people need to educate their parents and grandparents. This is something good. This is something we want. This is not some dystopian 15 minute city. This is just an affordable, sustainable way to live without continuing to pollute, to drain our finances, to fork over our wealth to massive companies yeah. for fuel and for autos and for cheaply built homes. We need a revolution to make this stuff happen. The best we can hope for is to convince counties and cities to make a corridor where we can experiment mm. with a walkable green space, mm -hmm. where we can experiment with tiny home neighborhoods, where we can experiment with mixed use zoning, where you've got tiny homes and a little corner shop and a cafe all in walking distance. Right. Current zoning laws prevent all of that. So why do zoning laws prevent tiny homes. Like there's so many more affordable ways to live in terms of shelter and whatnot, but zoning across the board just about makes it super hard or if completely illegal to have like a tiny house. Why? Well, there's a few different factors. One is just lack of education. Not enough people know that these are viable, nice alternatives. Tiny homes have been catching on for a few years now and most people have heard of them, but the cost of living crisis has only ramped up to the extent that it is now in the last three years. Mm -hmm. So it always takes more time to implement new solutions than you know the timeline you'd, you'd like to see it implemented in. Right. Beyond lack of awareness, Fairness, there are too many vested interests in keeping homes big. At, money, at the end of the day, is why we don't have more tiny homes that are affordable. Your municipality likes big homes because there's more home to tax and they get more tax dollars. Okay. So they're going to help encourage zoning for bigger homes, 1,500, 1,600, 2,000 square foot minimums. The insurance companies say that bigger homes are for safety, but a bigger home, bigger insurance check. And then builders big, bigger luxury homes for bigger profit margins. So many, many people want small, affordable homes, small home to clean, small bills, tiny mortgage, if any mortgage. Right. That's the freedom many of us want. But builders aren't building those because of zoning laws and then the baked in incentives from municipalities and then insurance companies. So it's, it's a greed thing. It's a money thing at the end of the day. That's why normal folks have to start taking this into their own hands. We're going to have to learn how to build homes again and push for zoning changes so we can design the communities we really want. Right. I've heard about some people being fearful of tiny homes because they think it brings a certain crowd. I've ne actually never seen like a visual of that before. I've, I've heard of people being afraid like, oh, you know, it's going to bring in more, I don't know, rambunctious people or Maybe whatnot. Maybe hippies or drugs or crime. Right. But 
everyone that has a tiny house are people that get it. They're like, I want to live in a more affordable way. Yeah. I want to live like, and they end up being usually a better neighbor. And yeah. So I'm just wondering if the powers that be like to spread that uh, agenda and just that idea when it's actually doesn't have much merit to it. Absolutely. I, I would have to agree 100%. Tiny homes are not like building a tent city. Right. People that build tiny homes want a warm, welcoming, dignified place to live. Right. There are so many creative, beautiful tiny homes, and most people are forced to either have them park somewhere illegally, have them low-key on someone's property, just kind of in a fuzzy gray area of the law. Right. Or own a ton of land to put them on where they're just not bothered. There's not a sustainable path for people to develop affordable little neighborhoods. And tiny homes don't have to be on wheels. That's just a legal loophole. The only reason tiny homes are on wheels is because it's classified as an RV and meets with less legal uh, blowback. People would build tiny homes on foundations if zoning allowed it. But zoning doesn't allow it. So this whole this whole idea that we're talking about, the keyhole concept, design for, you know, suburban areas or, or towns and whatnot, a lot of it is to test out these different types of concepts, like more tiny houses, more walkable paths and whatnot. How can we actually make that a possibility? How could someone listening to this or watching this try to get their town to start moving this direction or come up and allow this keyhole idea or to reduce zoning in their area? Like, where do you even begin? Sure. So just to summarize the keyhole concept, you've got the circle with your downtown, then you've got a corridor going from the middle of your county to the edge of the county. Think of it as like a slice of pie. That's the keyhole concept for the circle in the middle so, in yes. your downtown. Okay. So you've got your slice of pie. You're asking your county, you're bringing to get people together saying, Look, suburban living as we know it with cars and big expensive homes is killing us. It's so expensive. Fuel's getting more expensive. Homes are astronomical. We need to experiment with some new ideas. We don't want to change the whole county. We want a small slice of it, 5 to 10%, right. where we can have experimental zoning where people can opt in for tiny homes and then create a greenway path that's car-free. Because that's the key. The greenway path going from the downtown to the edge of the county, think of that as a necklace. And think of all the tiny home communities and affordable homes as like jewels strung along that necklace. Yeah. Necklace, a spine, whatever you want to call it. Right. Keyhole. Yeah. If we actually want to bring to life this vision of having small affordable neighborhoods with a green space and a pathway that's car free that connects it all with cafes and grocery stores, which I believe would become very popular very quickly for the counties that implement it. You have to start talking about it with friends and family and neighbors first. That's step one. Talk about it to start getting people's wheels spinning, thinking, hey, why don't we have that? That does sound possible. Pathways are smaller and cheaper than roads. Smaller homes are cheaper than bigger homes. Why are we not doing this? Right. Electric golf carts are cheaper than cars. Doesn't mean everyone needs to trade in all their cars for one golf cart or two. Have one car, have one golf cart. Have right. a hybrid community. Right. So step two, writing letters. Every county has a county board of commissioners. They're the ones that run all the zoning. They're the ones that pass the legislation and the rules for your county. Yeah. Zoning just is it's not a word for rules. It's rules for what you can and cannot do with your land. Okay. Writing letters to your board of commissioners, writing letters to your city council. Because cities and counties are two different municipal um, classes. Okay. Local government is more complicated than most people realize. So the city and the county would need to work together to make this keyhole concept a reality. But it, would, it basically boils down to having a pathway and building affordable, creative, mixed-use developments around that pathway. So once you start writing your board of commissioners or your city council, then you keep writing them. You keep emailing them. You get enough people writing letters and emailing saying, we want this for our community. Then you're going to get your first city council meeting scheduled. They meet on a weekly or monthly basis, or they should at least. Mm -hmm. Once you get that scheduled as an agenda item, you and a few dozen other people to a few hundred people, keep pushing it. Tell them you want to roll back zoning square footage laws. Tell them you want mixed use zoning. Tell them you want to have pocket tiny home neighborhoods legalized. Here in this county, minimum square footage for a new home is 1,500 square feet in the rural areas. Wow. 1,800 square feet in the suburban areas. That's so much more space than most people need. Exactly. The times have changed because we used to live in that Goldilocks period we discussed in the last podcast where people didn't think much about driving a car all the time. Fuel was cheap. Homes were cheaper. We're past all that now. Right. I feel like what we're saying right now, there are many people, and we see this across our social media pages in terms of like comments, but there are a lot of people that don't like these ideas because they feel safe and the type of home they're in now, they're, they feel safe with the type of car they have now. Normally, it's, it tends to side more on the, the older generation. And it, and it goes back to the Goldilocks podcast that we did. When you talked about the phases of an empire, you know, the rise and, you know, then also like the fall and whatnot, no one lives 
through all of those phases. So the older generation, they grew up in a time where it was more so at the height and, and of like, at least here in America, it was more at the height in terms of you know, economics and whatnot, but houses were more affordable, far more affordable. There was, you know, cars were more affordable and whatnot. And so now I, I see a big pushback where the older generation, when they hear about these new ideas, they just kind of say, well, no, you just need to work harder and you know you can have the same sort of life that we've always been having here in America. But matter of the fact is wages have not kept up with cost of living. Right. So it's, it's, it's just something to kind of like, you know, think about. When older folks break down the numbers, take the time to see what's actually happening out there now, I tend to see they'll, they'll have a pause and a moment of reflection saying, whoa, things are different now than back then. Right. And I'm not saying life was easy for them in their 20s. No. But here's one of the big differences. Back in the 40s, you could build a house that's 800 square feet, 1,000 square feet in most communities. You could build a good starter home yourself. And many GIs did just that coming back home from the war. Right. You could not legally build an 800 square foot starter home for your family. No. No builder can in this county. So the rules, there are so much more rules and red tape for our generation than previous generations. In some ways, we have more opportunities. And in other ways, we're being squeezed way harder economically. Right. So playing a blame game does not move the needle, doesn't get us any progress. Right. Everyone's culpable to some degree with the problems we're in, but mm -hmm. we need to work together to fix them. Yeah. You know, big corporations have a lot of guilt. Local government, big government has a lot of guilt. But the habits of consumers have a lot of guilt. Have we pushed back enough? in the last decade or two to demand what we need to be healthy, happy, and live affordably. Right. Now, it's going to take all of us rolling up our sleeves to make these changes, but it starts with talking with people you know about wanting affordable small homes legalized in your community, about wanting walkable infrastructure created so you don't necessarily have to have a car. Imagine how much money you'd save if you only needed one car as a family and could have an e-bike or a golf cart for going to the store up the road, going to the coffee shop, the downtown. It's not a big conspiracy about 15 minutes minute cities. We see so many comments about that. And it makes me sad because these people, often the older generation, are so wrapped up in fear. They think some giant cabal is coming to like imprison them in some city. Now I know there's smart cities being designed with cameras and sensors all over the place. We're getting more cameras and sensors in this county and I don't like it one bit. I'm with them on that. I want no part of a sensor camera filled up city. Walkable cities are not the enemy here. Walkable downtowns or suburbs are not the enemy. I think it's a solution. So the keyhole concept is all about legalizing small homes, legalizing the ability to have a green space corridor where you don't have the pollution of cars. Cars are killing more and more Americans every year. And it's tragic because it's preventable. We are becoming totally bound to the car bills, the mortgage bills. This concept of keystone zoning keyhole zoning, pardon me, is about pushing back to legalize better options. Because right now, so many people are paycheck to paycheck to pay for their oversized home and their oversized car, which they don't actually need to thrive if we design our cities properly. Right. And it's, it's not about converting the whole county. If you love your suburbs and your country club and your big SUV, keep it. Keep doing your thing. But there has to be another option for other people that want to live a different way. Yeah. We're going to demand it. That's why we're going to be creating templates for letters that people can send. Um, mm. That's an idea that I wanted to discuss on this with you. Yeah. Most people don't know where to start. So if you start talking with friends and family about, I want an affordable small home. I want a walkable community. Well, that's step one. Then email your commissioners. You need a letter and we're going to create a template. Okay. Well, if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll make this whole episode free. Yeah. Um, and by the way, we try to make as much free content as we can. At the end of the day, though, we are a group and we're trying to be able to fund ourselves to keep doing this. Uh, we're a team of three. We're a small team. We live frugally. With uh, small children. Yes. <laughs> Very small children. <laughs> need diapers and <laughs> right. all the things small kids need. Right. So we try to make as much free stuff as we can, but we're also trying to balance that with uh, just, you know, trying to keep some things under behind a paywall. It's just a balance. I mean, it'd be amazing if somehow there was enough coming in where we could make everything free one day. Like, that's our goal. That would be the goal. That would be amazing. And we'll get there bit by bit. Yeah, we'll get there. So anyway, if you do want to support us, you can click the link in our bio where we have different subscription tiers to offer more content besides um, just the content you might find here on YouTube or Spotify. But anyway, if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link below to one of the templates that we're going to whip up right after this and get that down there that you can use to uh, fill out a letter and send it off to your county commissioners and whatnot to try to make zoning change happen. Exactly. That's where a mom the momentum builds for a movement. If we have a name for this concept. And there's many different concepts being pushed by groups like Strong Towns, you know, for walkable cities and new urbanism. But we're trying to show a cohesive vision for what happens when you allow people to not have to have a car to live. 
Yeah. And when you allow people to build a small affordable shelter, when you do those things, maybe suddenly millennials will start having more kids because that's an issue. Young people aren't having enough kids the world over. I know right now, the way the growth is in America, it's it's not bad. It's better like, than most countries. It's better than most. But you were telling me somewhat about what just like what China's facing right now. Then they stop publishing certain numbers. China is losing population at a astonishing rate. They're not even publishing the accurate numbers for how their population is going into decline. We've never hit an area like this historically, past you know a plague or empire falling, where all around the globe, countries like Germany, Japan, South Korea, China, developed countries, they stopped having kids decades ago by and large. They don't have a millennial population. And if you don't have millennials, you don't have babies being born right now. Right. The US has a more stable population, but after the last three years of economic stress, birth rates have been plummeting. And that's terrible news when you need social security being paid into. When old people are expecting someone to take care of them, if there's no young people, everyone suffers. Because in China, there's four grandparents and two parents for every one child today mm -hmm. that are depending on that child often for care as they age. Right. So point being, it doesn't matter if you're content with your two SUVs and your giant home in the suburbs. If you want to live in a country that's thriving, you need to be helping young people today get their own home, have an affordable life, and not be working as an indentured servant just to pay their massive rent bill and their car bills to drive into the big city to move numbers around on spreadsheets. Right, it's funny that you do go drive to a job just to make the money to pay for that car. And so many people forget to actually live a life that uh, brings you know, real joy, like you know, spending time with your family, spending time outside nature. It's just a vicious cycle of go to work, make money to pay for the stuff that gets you to work every single day. Right, right. Earlier, you commented off the podcast about how in our, in, in our comments on social media, there's so many people that defend that lifestyle. Yeah. Which is kind of It's sad. sad. It is. It, seeing people in our comments say, well, there's nothing wrong with today's modern way of living. Like, what if I want to drive to work and I, and I, I want to just, you know, to make the money that I need to pay off that car because, you know, like, I like my car and then I, 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 you know, just sleep in my apartment. Like, people defending that way of life, they might think it's bringing them happiness, but let me tell you, if you try the other way of life, which is using less, having a smaller little home, which gives you more freedom to do more projects, like, around the house or with friends or spend more time in nature, you're, it's kind of, like, eye-opening. So anyway, it's just seeing people defend some of the modern ways of living, it's like you see that it's just gone to such an extreme. It's kind of sad. Like it, it plays into, this is kind of horrifying. John Rockefeller, he's famous for a quote that his accountant made public. In the early 20th century, John Rockefeller donated millions, maybe hundreds of millions. I need to look at that. But he donated millions of dollars to the public educational system. And the quote that his accountant made public was John Rockefeller said, I want a nation of workers, not thinkers. And he's got it now. And you, you look at all these people that have now just drummed up a lifestyle where they think the whole purpose of it is to work so they can keep having the resources and you know the cars and whatnot to keep working. It's just like, oh my gosh. Most people really don't want that. Humans are meant to have free time with family. We're meant to enjoy a connection with nature. We are meant to live differently. We treat ourselves like machines and robots and we're not machines and robots. So the whole concept of keyhole communities is carving out one slice of a county and a city where you can show the world what tiny living, what affordable, modest homes look like, what walkability looks like. This is what much of America had pre 19 20, but we can make it even better because we've got micro EVs and golf carts. We've got e-scooters. We've got so many cool technologies now from methane digesters to solar that we can have a vibrant, lovely life locally. Right. And if you need to drive a few hours away, you know, when I was in college, I lived on campus. I didn't own a car for a few years. I would rent a car when I needed it. I had an app to rent a zip car. It would unlock the car. I'd hop in. I'd pay a few bucks and drive where I needed to go, which I thought was awesome. Doesn't mean we all need to rent our cars. You can still own a car. But the point is you've got this cross section of a county where it's by and large car free and it gives people affordable starter home options and tiny homes for young folks or people that are older and downsizing because people need smaller options. It's what people had back in the early 1900s and we didn't have a housing crisis. Right. 
I think we've covered the idea pretty thoroughly. You know, this is the macro view of what Acorn Land Labs is doing. The cross-section of a county for experimental zoning for the walkable paths and the tiny homes, that's the macro view. And the micro view is like the freedom home or the acorn home, the sustainable home, like this vision here. You combine both of them and we can reinvent our world and gather so much of our time back and our finances. Because when you really boil it down and look at where you're spending your money, most of your money is paying off a giant mortgage or rent, which is going to big companies. Right. You're paying for your fuel, which goes to big energy companies. You're paying off your car, which goes to big auto companies. You're not left with a whole lot after that. No, you're really not. Like, do we all really just want to be indentured servants for corporate landlords and corporate automakers? No. No. You know what's sad? I already know there's going to be comments on this podcast. They're already going to, like, combat what we're saying right now. And they're already going to want to just continue living that life of being an indentured servant. And it's just like, ah. You know, it's going to happen because I think people, people feel like they're being attacked. We're not attacking anyone else that is living with a car, commuting to work, working the best they can to provide for their needs. We're doing the same thing. Right. Because those are the options that you have. Yeah. What we're trying to say is we need to push the people with power that can create more options for us, like opening up zoning and stuff. So we're not against the nine to five worker working his butt off. No, we have so much respect for that. That's person. us. That's us. We have so much respect because we know it's hard. We're just saying it's time we have other options. Right. Because as humans, we only live once and we should have time with our families. You shouldn't be forced to get a big expensive car and a big expensive house or pay expensive rent. When options exist otherwise, we just have to push the envelope. So just to dispel, I've seen a few comments, not too many, but we're not independently wealthy. We work really hard and we've saved up to buy little pieces of land for these projects. We've had some phenomenal supporters and we're trying to monetize different channels between the Land Lab Simulator app, the Acorn community, various DIY plans and our off-grid course. We are average folks from the suburbs trying to reimagine a different way and taking as much information as we can soak up from other brilliant authors and thinkers. We could make more money doing other projects than this one, but this is so important. It's one we're going to keep pushing because it could save millions of us so much money if we change the way we live by getting new ideas out there for projects like tiny homes, methane digesters, permaculture gardens, keyhole zoning. Right. Absolutely. Um, Let's see. Are we missing anything here? I don't think so. I think we've basically, I think we've hit every single point that we wanted to today. And like I said, those watching or those listening in, this podcast has been completely made free. I'm super happy about that. You know, like I said, we try to do as much free stuff as we can. But if you want to watch our other podcasts, you can click the link in our bio and head over to our Acorn community. Over there is where we have all our other podcasts. We have chat rooms where people get to discuss these ideas further, ask us questions. There's all sorts of cool stuff over there. So check that out. And um, just thank you all so much for uh, tuning in today. Thanks a bunch. We'll see you all next time. Take care.